Hello everyone. In this series of videos, I'm going to explore some of the AI offerings from SAP. As you might already be aware, SAP is focusing and investing a lot on AI as part of their strategy going forward. So thought I would make a series of videos on their SAP AI Core product. I will start with what is uh, the SAP AI Core all about and the various challenges it is trying to solve. Also, I will quickly look at some of the major components of uh, SAP AI Core. Uh, so SAP AI Core, uh, it can be found as a service in SAP BTP. Uh, so if you have the SAP BTP free tier version, uh, then you can play around with it. Uh, it supports the full lifecycle management of uh, AI scenarios. Uh, so you can develop, you can deploy, you can maintain, and you can do that from training a model to serving a model. Uh, so SAP UI Core uh, uses some of the open source tools available, uh, some of the highly popular open source tools available. Uh, it uses case of, uh, for serving the models. And of course, uh, SAP AI Core also comes with the pre-configured uh, SAP solutions. Uh, so you can right out of the box uh, use some of the solutions that come with the SAP AI Core. And you can also configure uh, for any open source uh, machine language frameworks as well. Uh, so in short, uh, what SAP AI Core does uh, is it turns machine language code uh, into a production-ready system. Okay, so if all of that didn't make sense, uh, let me give you a quick example uh, where I can contrast a web application uh, with a machine learning application. Uh, so deploying a web application is fairly straightforward, uh, especially in Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, so if you have worked with SAP BTP environment, uh, you know that Cloud Foundry is one of the three runtimes available. Uh, so CF push, uh, that's the command uh, you need to know. Uh, so here I have a simple application. Uh, I wrote this in in, uh, Python uh, because some, most of the machine le language uh, learning applications are written in Python. So I created this web application also in Python. Uh, so all you need to know is uh, this uh, CF push command and then the name of the app and then you can deploy it. And this is going to go ahead and deploy it to the SAP BTP Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, if you've also worked with the cloud application programming model, uh, you can also use the MTA tool to deploy multi-target applications. Uh, so all of this is uh, fairly straightforward and and once uh, this uh, application is deployed, uh, then an endpoint is uh, exposed to us, and then we can go ahead and uh, uh, we can go ahead and access that endpoint, and this application is live. However, uh, machine language applications are a different beast. Uh, they have uh, different requirements. Uh, but uh, let me go ahead and wait for this application to start. It's right about to start. Uh, so then I can go ahead and take this URL right here. Uh, so if I take this. URL, URL right here, and this is my uh, path v2 slash greetings. So if I go in here, maybe open uh, uh, a browser here. Give me one second while I open a browser. And I can go ahead and say slash uh, v2 slash greeting. And this is going to say flask code hello world. Uh, so this is uh, all you need to know about uh, the web applications. Uh, whereas when it comes to uh, whereas when it comes to machine uh, learning applications, uh, it's a lot more uh, it's a lot more complicated. It's not so easy with machine learning applications. Uh, typically in machine learning applications, you have uh, quite a number of uh, different phases. Uh, so I've uh, listed training as one of the phase. This is where you train a model. Uh, you also have monitoring phase where you see how the uh, model is uh, behaving, like performing and so on. Uh, you have the serving phase, but we will look at the training phase and the serving phase. And serving phase is where you turn the machine le learning model into an API. Okay, so let's look at the training phase. Uh, let's assume that you have written some machine learning code in Python to train a model. Uh, of course, you can write this in any language. You can use any of the libraries, scikit-learn, pandas, and so on. Uh, let's say you want to predict a house prices or the popular survival rate of passengers in Titanic or the classification of Irish data set. Uh, but just to be clear, uh, SAP AI Core uh, is not going to help you with this Python code, or for that matter, AI code in any language. I'm going to assume that you already have the expertise and have written the code uh, for training a model. What SAP AI Core will help you, though, uh, is how to set up the infrastructure to train the model. Uh, so typically, training a model is resource intensive, uh, depending on the volume of data and the algorithms used. Uh, so SAP AI Core uh, will help you run your specialized uh, Docker container, so uh, this machine 
learning uh, application, this code, uh, can be inside a Docker container, and this can be uh, like running in a, a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so SAP AI Core can help you set this up uh, with just a few clicks. Now, to train a model, you also need data. Uh, so let's assume that this uh, data is stored in a cloud storage like AWS S3. Of course, it can be anywhere as well. And also, let's assume that in order to train the data, you want the user to input some uh, fine-tuning parameters. Uh, so all this needs to be supported, and SAP AI Core can help you with all this uh, setup. Now, once the execution is complete, uh, so the model is created. So once this application runs, a machine learning model is uh, created. Uh, now, if, if, now, you can serialize this model into a cloud storage uh, like AWS for the next phase. Uh, so you can copy this machine learning model that has just been created. Uh, it's trained with this data and so on. And you can copy it to a cloud storage uh, AWS S3 bucket. And this can be used for the next phase, which is the serving phase. Uh, I mean, we are only looking at the training and the serving phase. Uh, we're not looking at how it's uh, performing and so on. So now let's look at the serving phase. Uh, in the serving phase, uh, you want to turn the machine learning model uh, into APIs uh, that the client application can consume. Again, you have a variety of open source framework to do this. Uh, for example, in Python, uh, you can use Flask. And uh, in the following uh, series of videos, uh, I will be showing you a, a sample application uh, using Python and Flask. Uh, SAP can AI Core uh, can help you run the Python code in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we saw that with the training phase as well. Uh, similarly, with the serving phase as well, uh, it can help you run this uh, Python code in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it can help with copying the trained model into the container. Uh, so, uh, so this code requires the trained model that you copied into uh, cloud storage in the previous uh, session. Uh, so you want to bring it into this uh, Docker container here. Uh, then you're in your Python code, you can load the model and expose the API endpoints uh, that do the prediction. So this is a, a sample workflow uh, for the serving phase. Uh, again, uh, SAP AI Core uh, is not a tool for developing machine learning code, uh, but rather a tool for turning machine learning code into a production-ready system. Okay, so now that we know what SAP AI Core can do, uh, let's look at uh, some of the important components of SAP AI Core. Uh, if you have not guessed by now, uh, guessed it by now, uh, I have mentioned it many times. Uh, SAP AI Core uses a Kubernetes cluster to deploy the machine learning applications. Uh, this provides us more granular. Uh, control over the containers and makes it uh, highly scalable. Uh, so we use Argo CD uh, to push the deployment YAML files uh, into the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the way it works is quite simple. Uh, so the deployment YAML files, uh, they are placed uh, in a specific folder in the GitHub repo. Uh, the folder can be named anything, uh, but the Argo and the Argo CD uh, this is an open source tool. Uh, this is uh, installed as a custom resource in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, because it resides in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, it has a full visibility into the cluster. Uh, the Argo CD, uh, this is then tasked with monitoring this uh, particular folder, uh, the GitHub repo folder, uh, where the deployment files are located. Argo CD then makes sure uh, that the deployment files are accurately accurately reflected uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so your uh, desired state uh, is the uh, YAML files that reside in this pipeline folder. And then your actual state uh, is what is there in the Kubernetes cluster. So Argo CD will make all efforts uh, to make sure that the desired state is equal to the actual state. Uh, so any updates, so you as a developer, uh, you can simply make changes to this YAML files here, uh, and uh, they will be synced to the Kubernetes cluster. So this, uh, uh, so there are quite a few advantages of um, uh, using the Argo CD. Uh, so let's assume that somebody manually runs kubectl uh, to apply uh, the YAML files uh, changes uh, directly to the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so now uh, what Argo CD can do, because it has full visibility into the Kubernetes cluster, uh, it can make sure that the uh, that there is a difference between the desired state and the actual state, and it can sync up the changes. Also, if something fails, um, it can you can simply roll back to the previous version in GitHub, and then you will have a working application. Uh, so access control, uh, so this is indirectly uh, 
uh, Argo CD helps you with it. Uh, so you can um, kind of uh, lock down this Kubernetes cluster and all your developers can only have access to this uh, pipeline folder right here. Uh, so based on what changes they make here, uh, so that uh, changes is going to be reflected here. So there is some governance uh, and uh, yeah, access control. So um, GitHub repository, you can review the code before it's uh, deployed and so on. Uh, and also, uh, uh, yeah, because it is a custom resource in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, you have uh, full visibility in the cluster as well. Now, coming to a uh, case uh, for the serving phase, uh, we also use another very popular open source tool named uh, KServe. Uh, as you might have uh, guessed already, uh, the requirement for training uh, is uh, different from that of uh, serving. Uh, serving phase is where you take your machine learning models and expose them as APIs uh, so client applications can consume them, uh, which also means uh, that there is going to be multiple concurrent connections uh, to your exposed endpoint. Uh, assuming that your uh, this uh, application, this uh, endpoint that you exposed uh, becomes quite popular. Uh, whereas in the training phase, um, you just need a really powerful virtual machine uh, to crunch all the numbers. Uh, in the serving phase, the requirements are different, like I mentioned before. Uh, you also need to be able to load the model and meet the demand, uh, meet the, like uh, all the users that are uh, accessing your endpoint. And this is where uh, KServe comes into play. Uh, so KServe uh, is built for highly scalable use cases. Uh, it has support for GPUs. Uh, nowadays, CPUs are not enough to meet the demands, so that's why we have GPUs, uh, auto-scaling, scale to zero, canary rollouts, and so on. Uh, so the KServe is a, a tool that we are using for the serving phase, um, and uh, yeah, it definitely brings in a lot of advantages uh, to the SAP AI core. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, so in the next few videos, uh, I will talk about how to set up uh, SAP AI Core. Uh, we will also look at a simple use case for training a model, and then we will uh, also conclude it uh, by serving that model, uh, by exposing APIs uh, based on that model. Cheers. Thanks for watching.